Hi, I'm Charlie, and here at Precision Matthews, we sell a lot of knee mills. This one is exactly where you might expect to find a milling machine, solidly on the concrete, ready to be set up for years of service. But of course, all our machines arrive on pallets, and removing something heavy from a pallet is a non-trivial task. So in this video, we're going to talk about the seemingly simple subject of safely moving a knee mill down about 8 inches on the z-axis. There are three main rigging strategies we're going to cover in this video, and which one you choose will depend on what equipment you have available to you. Let's get started. Of those three strategies, we're going to go from least to most pain in the butt. If you have a forklift, that's going to be the clear winner, so we'll start with that. The easiest way to rig this up is to approach the machine from the back with the forks together as far as they'll go. Then, after double checking that the lifting eyelet is screwed all the way into the top of the ram, run a loop of chain through the eyelet, around the forks, and take the slack out of the chain by raising the fork slightly. Note that even with the ram and table all the way back, any knee mill is going to be front heavy. The mill swinging forward is not a problem in and of itself, but it's easier if it stays level, so we'll add a stack of wood so the mill can lever on the bottom of the forks and we're on our way. I'll reiterate here that this is by far the easiest option. If you don't have a forklift, it's surprisingly inexpensive to rent one. Or make a friend who has a forklift. People talk about wanting to have a friend who has a boat or a friend who owns land that'll let you hunt on, but my goal is to have a friend who has a forklift I can borrow. Maybe a skid steer and excavator too. Now many more people have an engine hoist than a forklift, so we'll cover that method next. The first problem is that the legs of most engine hoists don't fit under the pallet. One solution is to jack the pallet up and put it on enough blocks to clear the legs of the engine hoist. The mill comes bolted to the pallet and we're going to keep it that way until we're completely ready to lift it. If you have a pallet jack, you can use the method shown here, but you can accomplish the same thing with a toe jack by going to each corner, jacking that corner up, placing some wood, going to the next corner, and sort of spiral upwards corner by corner until you're at the height that you need. I've even seen people use this method with a long pry bar or burke bar to lift each corner. Simple levers and fulcrums like that built the pyramids, so I think they can probably raise a pallet by 8 or 9 inches too. No comments about how the pyramids were actually built by aliens or time travelers or Lovecraftian old ones. I know we're on YouTube, but we're not in that part of YouTube. So let's keep any conversation grounded in Newtonian physics. With the pallet raised to its final level, now we can remove the lag screws. The reason I'm even mentioning it is that I've talked to more than a couple people who take the lag screws out first and then knock their mill over while trying to move the pallet around. So let's learn from other people's mistakes. And if you make any new mistakes, let me know so that I can learn from them. In short, wait as long as you can before removing the lag screws. Now we're hooked up and ready for the engine hoist. You'll need two people for this, and it's a bit nerve-wracking even if everything goes perfectly. Unlike the forklift method, we don't have anything to brace the ram of the mill against, so it is going to hang quite far forward. Since it's hanging like that, make sure you double check that the locks on the ram dovetail are secured. If they're not, that dovetail could slip and drop the base from the head unexpectedly. I talked about learning from other people's mistakes, but that was one I learned all on my own. So now I'm telling you, double check the ram dovetail locks are secured if you're going to hoist a mill like this. Same goes for using a gantry crane, chain hoist, or any other method where the mill is going to tip forward like this. Once the machine's in the air, you can remove the pallet and any blocks of wood, gently lower the machine, and let out a sigh of relief. If you don't have the means or the will to raise the pallet, you can also cut the sides off so that the legs of the engine hoist straddle the pallet. You might think that cutting would be easier than lifting the pallet, but you might change your mind after 10 minutes of running a doll blade on a sawzall, squatting next to a machine with a concrete floor as a hard stop on the bottom. It's a pain for sure, but we include it here because it is an acceptable method and one that requires the least extra equipment. So there you have it. 
No matter what equipment you have on hand, there is always going to be a way to get the knee mill from the pallet safely to the floor. There is still more work to do, so in our next video, we'll get the machine ready to make its first chips. Of course, these are our favorite ways of rigging machines like this, but by no means are they the only ways. If you have a clever method that we didn't cover, drop it in the comments below so we can all learn something. Thanks for watching.